Frustrating game, really proud of our guys. You know, they um, it was been really easy for them to, you know, after that bye week and, you know, you know, we did to come into this game and not play real hard. Our guys played hard, they strained. Uh, you know, again, proud of that. I thought the defensive effort was absolutely outstanding. The defensive game plan, the way the guys played, they played winning football. That's some of the best defensive football we've seen against a really explosive Hawaii team. You know, when you look at the 21 points on the board, you, and you think, you know, seven was the offense going to pick six. You know, the fourth down stops the turnovers we got early. They were critical. And going into the game, the biggest thing we had talked about after kind of, you know, looking at the last bunch of weeks was, you know, third downs and turnovers. When you, when you look at how success, unsuccessful we've been, again, on a third downs and you know, the lack of turnovers that we've created and some that we've given up, it's really what's kind of put us behind the eight ball in a lot of these games. Um, you come in halftime, you know, and, and you've got a, you know, a seven to seven ball game and, you know, you, you've won in the turnover battle, but, you know, not very good on third downs, you know, and them, they, they uh, executed a couple fourth downs. So I believe they were something like, I think they converted like seven, of the, no, not seven, but four of the seven of the drive. So they were beating us there. Then you look at the second half again, we were poor on third downs and, uh, and they won the turnover battle in the second half. Um, tight ball game, you know, obviously the missed field goal was really critical at that time. You know, it looked like it was going to be a tight ball game. you got to be able to make that to make it a two-score game. kind of changes play calling the way things are done. Um, you know, you come out in the second half, and it's a pretty back-and-forth game. And, uh, again, that pick six, you know, we had a wide-open guy. It's critical. We had a couple drops on the first down, so now you're sitting there at second and long. You know, those things can't happen. And then, again, at the end of the game, you know, you're, you're sitting there and uh, – um, you know, the situation where it's uh, 21-7, you need to put points on the board and still a lot of time. Let's say you can get a stop, you get the ball back, you got a great opportunity. And, you know, you're in a third down situation. If nobody's open, you got to get rid of that ball. You just got to get rid of it. You don't have to force the ball there. You still have a great opportunity on fourth down to execute. So, again, critical moments. You know, the young quarterback will learn from that stuff. Um, and, and, again, we'll uh, continue to grow. I think the biggest thing now is, you know, again, our guys continuing to show up to work and doing the things that they've done, you know, every single day to get themselves prepared. They look like a prepared football team. They look like a team that, you know, had a lot of energy and they played with it. So I'm proud of them for that. So, obviously, disappointed on the loss. You know, I mean, these guys worked extremely hard. Um, and, uh, you know, you, just, you want something good to happen for them. So um, we've got a couple more in front of us. And we've got to keep our head down and keep working. Aside from the third down, what do you think the biggest problem was on offense? Uh, you know what? I mean, going into the game, we talked about running the ball continually. To, to, we wanted to lessen the possession, and I thought the plan worked pretty good for the most part. You know, in the game, at some point, we we're going to have to make an explosive play. I think the biggest thing was first down. We kept getting into a lot of, you know, second and sevens and things like that. So you're, you're, you're kind of in pass situations. Um, again, the drops in the second half on first down were huge. We had two big drops um, that, that put us in the hole. And, you know, and I think that was probably the biggest thing. We just, you know, and again, you know, you're, you're getting a break in a young guy and a quarterback, you know, and he, he was off the mark a couple of times tonight, but he also made some really good gutsy throws. He did some really good things. So um, he, he's got to be a little bit more on the money to move the chance. Speaking about that drive as well, after the third turnover of the first quarter, um, you talked about first downs a lot. Mm -hmm. it, was two, it was a two-yard loss on that first down, and then back-to-back -back run plays inside the 30. Was the idea just to kind of kind of come away with the three points and kind of just cut your losses there? No, not at all. We liked, what the, we, we liked what we had. They did a good job of dropping the safety into the box. So, you know, we, we kind of went to some of that, that RPO stuff in the second half. They didn't get to it as much. The biggest thing was the discrepancy in the play. We only had 25 plays in the first half, and I believe they had 40. You know, um, and, and why is that third down? You know what I'm saying? you got to convert third down and, you know, and flip that. So, um, you know, at times, you know, maybe we need to be a little bit more aggressive in our play calling. But I thought Darren did I mean, again, you're sitting there with a the tie ball game, you know, in the third quarter. You've got a great opportunity to win that football game. Big six really was tough, you know. And then after that, again, you know, bouncing right back and, you know, driving the field and giving yourself a chance to make it a seven-point ball game, you know, you got to convert on that. You know I mean? It, you, know, you can't throw that pick on third down. It looks like your strategy offensively was to basically – Take well passing lanes, not too much pressure on the quarterback. Is that pretty accurate? It is. You know, I mean, you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't, what they do. Um, they came out and, you know, they wanted to run the ball a little bit more than they normally do. So they kind of broke a tendency and wanted to run the football, and we were okay with that, you know. Um, we needed to get them into a third down situation so um, we can get off the field. And I thought our guys did a really good job. I mean, it's now they moved the ball. I mean, they moved the ball up and down the field. And as the field got shorter and it shrunk a little bit, I mean, I think that helped us. You know, uh, we were a little bit more physical at the point of attack at times. But when they made the change in quarterback, um, it wasn't really the passing game that changed a whole lot. But what changed was quarterback run game. You know, and he came in, McDonald came in and did a really good job of keeping the ball. He became an option on those fourth downs and third and shorts, um, which weren't there before. But with his, him and his ability, I think that part really, you know, went, went to their favor. Jalen looked like he played as a more maybe a safety as a nickel. That's 
Yeah, it's kind of more of a nickel. Yeah, yeah, I mean, based on what they do, you're kind of playing more of a two linebacker set, you know. But that's the great thing about his versatility, and that's why people are so excited about him, you know, at that next level, is because he can't play in and outside the box. And he did a really good job at that. So it was mostly by defense today. Was it? Or, was it it's more nickel. More yeah. nickel. Yeah. yeah. As, as young as he is, he's, he's had several starts. What does he tell you? Because on the hit, there's no one throwing across the body. There's no one there that he can throw into. So what does he come over and say? Well, about he, that? He's looking at red lines in the back of the end zone. The problem is, white when, guys in between, the white jerseys in between. Yeah, you know, you see it every Sunday though in the NFL. You see it on Saturdays, and you know, it's one of those deals. You got to be careful how far you are on at that moment. You know, bottom line is, it's, it's just football one on one. If I'm rolling to my left, I'm never going to throw back across my body to the right or vice versa. And, you know, sometimes you're in that situation and you're pressing too hard. You feel like you have to make a play there. Again, it's just it, it's it, it's growth. It's it's understanding of the situation and being calm within it. Just knowing. I mean, in your mind, you need to be saying to yourself on a mouth, oh, it's, you know, it's third down, nothing's there. Let's throw it away. We'll just fight another day on fourth down. So, um, you know, and again, arm, arm strength isn't there. Not that many guys can go ahead and get through all those guys, right. you know. So it was it was a critical era, you know, a critical moment. So, you know, you have choices as a coach. I mean, and, you know, you guys know me. I'm a fiery guy. But, you know, when you got a young quarterback like that and he's working his tail off and he's already kind of throwing pick six and he's already feeling that, you know, you got to be careful how hard you are at that moment. You know, it's better to sit down and film him, watch it with him, and go over with him and, and, and you know, discuss the situation, where you are in mindset. You got to talk about self-talk, you know, the next time you get in that situation um, and then coach him through it. Can you talk a little bit about how every time this team needed a big play, it seemed like Jericho was um, obviously in the middle of it from the two interceptions, the down punt, the block, the field goal. Can you talk a little bit about what you got from him at that? Well, uh, you know, again, you know, he's, he's a senior, been around for a long time, and you know, early in the game, he made some really big plays. So, um, again, proud of him. We knew they were going to put the ball up in the air a lot, and you know, and the matchup was pretty good, you know, uh, for him. And uh, and he just he did a really good job of being Johnny on the spot, you know. And he had a chance for for a third pick too, you know. what I'm saying that was. Uh, I don't think they scored on that drive, so I'm nervous. You've been having trouble forcing turnovers this year, so yeah. that had to been really uh, exciting in the first quarter to actually be forcing turnovers. Like yeah, that. I mean, again, when you look at college football now, you look at like the critical stats. I mean, yards aren't a big deal anymore. It used to be back in the day, everybody you know talk about how many yards they gain. It's really not the, the most critical stat anymore. It's really turnovers. You know, I mean, there's turnovers and being good on third down. You know, if you can get around that 40, 45 percent mark conversion on third downs. You know, and then if you can, you know, create turnovers, you're going to win a lot of football games. So um, again, I think early in the game that that boded well for us, and I think that's why it was such a close game. We had a great opportunity. You know, but you got to take advantage of the hard thing is. is three turnovers in the first half, and you get seven points out of it, right? So one of the big things also is after turnovers um, and after getting stops is getting big scores. You know, some of their turnovers, though, happen deep in their uh, their own end, so we had a long field to drive. You know, we get the fourth down stop. We got 99 to go. We get the pick in the end zone. So we get a lot of long field. It wasn't a lot of short fields, you know? Do you think it's like you did with the Brazil State game? Do you think it's good to keep playing in there to experience this? Or did you think about maybe you have an answer or you say work for money, though? Well, if we're throwing the football, the guy that gives us the best chance throwing the football is Kenyon Oblak, right? He's the best natural thrower out there. Um, and, um, you know, again, you know, it, it, the way that game was going, you know, in our mind not being 100% running the football, not feeling 100% comfortable running the football, and we never even talked about it. I mean, it's just, you know, we know that, you know, again, there's some critical things. I mean, again, on that pick six, you know, you got a wide open guy, and you're going to, I mean, it's crazy how the game works. I and mean, you're sitting there in a seven point ball game, you got a wide open guy, you're about to, you know, move the chain, you get about an 18 yard game, and all of a sudden, you're, now you're looking back and you're down seven, you know. But, you know, kick yourself in the tail, and you know, you go back to work, and, you know, and you coach off it. But now, Kenny's the guy right now. All right, thanks, Ray.